Okay, so we're going to talk about, I don't know if you know this, but when the world goes insane and politicians become a joke, voters turn to comedians for sanity. <laughs> that is what's been happening. When politicians become a joke, citizens turn to comedians for sanity. Because what's happening in the Ukraine? Well, Ukraine's upcoming. This is this is this already happened, but this was an article just before the Ukraine election that just happened, and it says Ukraine's upcoming election pits a deeply unpopular president against a TV comedian. For millions of Ukrainian citizens mired in economic corruption, this election is anything but funny. This comedian's serious about politics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to be, I was, I was thinking as you read, I was like, oh, man, how many of those Ooh, are going to be this, in the article? This guy's, this guy's platform is no laughing matter. <laughs> <laughs> I want to represent you. No joke. <laughs> yeah, but the, the election victory is the punchline. <laughs> so uh, this is a great article. It says, for the past five years, Ukraine played a central role in U.S. foreign policy. Washington, Washington D.C. vigorously supported the 2013-14 Maidan, uh, Maidan, am I pronouncing that correct? Maidan, Maidan uprising that ousted Viktor Yanukovych and brought Poroshenko to power. Now, we supported Poroshenko, and uh, a lot of people say that he supports Nazis. OK, just so you know, that's who we're supporting in the Ukraine. A bipartisan who's who of Washington power brokers, including Senator John McCain and Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland, hustled into Kiev to cheer on the uprising. So the United States is there cheering on and overthrowing another government. And did they pick the right side? Did they pick the people of the people? Well, what has happened since we backed that Poroshenko? Well, what's happened is a recent poll showed over two-thirds believe the country is headed in the wrong direction. While Gallup reported that Ukraine now has the world's lowest trust in government at 9%. That's what the United States does. Do you understand that we install leaders that are friendly to Wall Street and our corporations and that the people hate? Do you understand how that works? Do you see do you see it now? So we installed this guy. Lowest trust in government. <laughs> the world's lowest trust in government, 9%. That's our guy. <laughs> That's the guy the United States back. That's our intelligence agencies backing them. That's the CIA, the NSA. That's our good intelligence people. Over the past five years, as Western politicians and think tankers churned out bromides about Kiev's being on the front lines of freedom and democracy, ordinary Ukrainians were plunged into an economic nightmare in a nation that, under Poroshenko, became the poorest country in Europe. So we institute another friggin' revolution. We do this. And who do we install? We install another oligarch who's 100% corrupt and screws over his own people. It's weird we're never, we're never supporting like the guy who's speaking for the people. Isn't that weird? It's like I'm noticing a trend. It's like I'm noticing a template. <laughs> I'm noticing a template. The United States and the European Union sank billions into Poroshenko's Kiev in the hope he'd tackle corruption. Of course, the notion was ludicrous. Putting one of the world's richest men in Ukraine, putting one of putting one of the richest men in Ukraine, whose assets has soared the year after the Maidan uprising, in charge of defeating corruption. So you put. So what did the United States do? We find the rich guy over there who's friendly with us. We install him, <laughs> and then we put him in charge of defeating corruption. <laughs> And the way they put it in the nation is that it's a bit like putting uh, the drug baron El Chapo in charge of drug enforcement. The outcome wasn't hard to predict, but it was hard for John McCain. It was hard for the United States State Department. It was hard for our CIA to figure out. The West faith in Poroshenko further cemented hatred against him. 
one would imagine the only thing worse than being unable to afford food is doing so while listening to the, quote, let them eat spreadsheets, end quote, platitudes from Western analysts as the country's billionaire president adds to his own piggy bank. So do you see what the United States people, are, our, our neoliberal elites are doing? And they're telling everybody, oh, <laughs> we've got, let them eat spreadsheets, platitudes from Western analysts as the country's billionaires add to their bank. It's almost like this is like a worldwide system of neoliberals, liberal, liberal, fuck everybody except the oligarchs system. This is your capitalism. So he won. So the comedian won. So they had the election. The Ukraine comedian Zelensky wins presidency by a landslide. A landslide. Now, this isn't a comedian like, uh, you know, Al Franken, who devoted his life to po- to politics, wrote book after book about politics, hosted a radio show talking about politics, a national radio show, talk, not, uh, does national television sketches about politics, went toured the country, talk about, and then he ran for office and won. This is just a jagoff comedian who decided to be president. He won in a landslide. Do you see how when people are corrupt, you, you go for it? Do you see what happens? The polls give the political newcomer who dominated the first round of voting three weeks ago more than 70 percent support. Mr. Zelensky, 41, challenged incumbent President Petro Poroshenko, who has admitted defeat. The apparent result is being seen as a huge blow to Mr. Poroshenko and a rejection of Ukraine's establishment. Well, there's similarities. (laughs) There it is. So there's the guy. There's the comedian. Voldemort Zelensky got wow. 73% of the vote. 73%. And then Petro Poroshenko, 24%. So all the rich people voted for him, and all the rest of the people who were left over voted for the comedian. The apparent result is being seen as a huge blow. To, oh, we just did this. Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimea Peninsula on March 24th after a controversial referendum on self-determination, a move condemned internationally. Since then, Ukraine forces have been fighting Russian-backed separatists and volunteers in the East. Mr. Zelensky, start. So you want to know who this guy is? So, by the way, he's, he's going to try and stop this. So Zelensky is going to try and bring peace to this problem of the separatists, Russian-backed separatists. But who is this guy? Well, he starred in a long-running satirical drama. You're not going to believe this. Servant of the people in which his character accidentally becomes Ukraine's president. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No. This is a real thing. This really happened. He plays a teacher who was elected after his expletive-ridden rant. There it is. Expletive-laden rant about corruption goes viral in social media. Wow. Boy, I think I know of another comedian who has expletive laden rants <laughs> about fucking corruption. Where's my goddamn presidency? <laughs> well, it's not too late. I gotta I mean, be willing to you... run, I guess. Come on, everybody's <laughs> saying <laughs> saying I'd vote for comedian Jimmy Dore, Tulsi well, Dore, Dore Ventura, Dore for president. Tulsi got on the debate stage. I think I bet if I pushed it hard, could I get sixty five thousand donations, unique donations? From 30 different states? Isn't that the criteria? I think so, yeah. Only one way to find out. I mean... (laughs) Could I get 65000 I bet you we could. Should we do a GoFundMe? Is that how you would do it? You would do it through a GoFundMe? I just... No, you just do it. (laughs) You got to set up a thing. You have to set up a campaign, and you have to set up where you can take money. And I think you do that through ShareBlue or something. Yep. It would be awesome to get on the debate stage and tell people the truth about... uh, you know, the, the the origins of Russiagate and the failure of the Democratic Party and their minions never, in the press. I would never answer the direct question. I, I would either. always answer the question that's right. I, want I want asked. That's right. Me too. And I would make sure to stand up and walk around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here we let's keep going. Uh, so that's who he is. Can you believe this? That's a real thing. He played a character that accidentally becomes Ukraine's president after he has an expletive-laden rant 
goes viral. He I, just posted that as his stump speech. <laughs> he was like, I'm already halfway there. I, I there told, I am. I want to catch this series now, don't you? Me too. His show was the uh, Servant of the People. So I guess his political party is called Servant of the People. Analysts believe that Mr. Zelensky's informal style and vow to clean up Ukrainian is going to drain the swamp. So he's got an informal style, expletive led, led, led and ran about corruption, and he's going to drain the swamp. So blah, 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 people are desperate. And he's going to revamp the economy with a uh, a daily two drink minimum. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, take a break. <laughs> hey, guys, back me up on this. <laughs> Uh, so uh, analysts believe Mr. Zelensky's informal style and vow to clean up Ukrainian politics resonated with voters who are disillusioned with the country's path under Mr. Poroshenko. Eschewing traditional campaign tactics, Mr. Zelensky channeled his on-screen persona by promising to stamp out corruption and loosen the grip of oligarchs in the Ukraine. Sounds very much like someone here in the United States. Experts say his supporters, frustrated with establishment politics and cronyism, have been energized by his charisma and anti-corruption message. Boys, a lot of similarities. People, turns out people are people, huh? No matter where you are, people are people. Sounds like they want a Bernie, too. Sounds like they want a Bernie or a Tulsi right there. So that's what it sounds like. Yeah. So there you go. There's the story about the comedian who became president of the Ukraine after the United States effed it up. Next live Jimmy Dore show is June 5th. That's a Wednesday at Hermosa Beach Comedy Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets where it might be coming to your town. And if you love the show, please become a patron. Please support the show. We give you hours of bonus material every week. And please click that bell to make sure you're subscribed. Even if you think you are already subscribed, they unsubscribe people every day. Just check. Thanks for your support.